Alright, welcome to another video, and before we get started, I'd like to take a quick minute to thank all the Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members whose names you see scrolling across the screen right now. Uh, they make this financially possible, and without you, I probably wouldn't be here making videos, so thank you. Alright, the swordfish. This video is going to be kind of a quick look at my uh, swordfish build, how I set mine up, and my maiden flight, followed by another, a second flight. Um, pretty much my experience with the swordfish so far, and it's been a good one. I'm really happy with it um, But let's get into it So first up as far as my bill, um, I'll show you a few things that I did here You can see that um, starting at the front. I've moved my GPS up to the nose in front of the battery and I just kind of put it in the little slot underneath where the canopy Connects right there where it kind of tabs in and I ran the wires through there's a little pre-molded channel in the fuselage there next to the battery and I taped over that with a bit of white tape just to keep it neat. And I did have to extend those wires a little bit. Um, but I chose to put it up there because I wanted to put my Cadex uh, Waxnail HD transmitter in the top bay. Which would have put it relatively close to the GPS which is known to cause the issues with the V1 transmitter, the VTX. So I decided to move GPS up there and it made room for me to put my... Uh, Waxnail transmitter back here and I'm printed a little uh, tray that kind of fits in place of the stock cover for this top bay and it lifts the transmitter up, mounts the transmitter up in the airflow to keep it cool and it gives you a nice little place to uh, plug your antennas in as well and you can see I have my servo, my pan servo was mounted just behind the canopy with the camera on it um, some people don't like the view with, with the airplane in view like that but I kind of like it so I put my camera there which keeps everything attached and when I remove the canopy to insert or remove the batteries and everything like that, everything, all the video stuff stays put on the airplane. It just kind of a better overall user experience to me. Um, not having to fumble with wires and everything when you're taking stuff apart. And in that bay behind the video transmitter, which was previously for the GPS, is where the GPS comes mounted by default. Uh, that net left a nice little empty bay there for me to put my uh, crossfire antenna. And it just kind of pokes out through the top cover and the bottom element pokes down into the foam fuselage down, stops just below, just before it comes out the bottom. And it's just to the rear of the bottom hatch. And the stock crossfire antenna length is just enough with the antenna mounted there to sit the crossfire antenna between the flight controller and the servo is just kind of hot glued down to the little wood tray there. So it makes everything kind of falls into place and makes for a neat setup and it just kind of works. And as far as everything else, everything else is 100% the way it came. I just added the pan servo, put the video transmitter in my little printed piece, put the crossfire receiver and antenna where you saw it, and moved the GPS up in the nose. Everything else is the way it comes with the uh, return to home version, which comes with the flight controller, which is the Atom RC Navi F405. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the maiden flight now that we know how everything's set up. So you can see we're getting ready to take off here. Um, you might notice by my OSD, this is iNav. It comes shipped with iNav 5.1 or 5.0.1 or whatever. I forget the exact number, but it's five point something. Um, and I updated it to iNav 6 and loaded the iNav 6 diff file that's available on Adam RC's website. And then I made a few little minor changes just to suit my own preferences as far as flight modes and and arranged the OSD and obviously I set up the OSD for walks and hill and, and uh, got all that working but as you can see the launch went really good um, like I said I kind of like this view where I'm able to see the nose in both motors and everything it kind of feels good looks good to me at least so uh, we're in the air now we're flying and everything feels pretty good so far so we'll jump ahead a bit to where we uh, tried out cruise mode here and we're kind of playing around with the uh, pan and tilt a little bit. And I like being able to look back over the uh, over the tail like that. And this is a uh, 270 degree servo that one of my viewers actually uh, clued me in on. And I've tried it, the same one I used in the AR Pro. I got one and put it in here too. I kind of like this servo. It's kind of becoming my favorite pan servo lately. But I'll put a link to that as well as some other equipment below the video as far as stuff that we use. And uh, you can see now we're flying in hold mode, which is position hold or uh, loiter, depending on what you want to call it. It's basically loitering a position. 
and it just kind of gives me a chance to try out navigation, see how it's able to, to navigate and fly and everything. And you can see it's doing a fairly good job of it. And uh, you can see we're, because we're in a navigation mode, you see my throttle is in auto throttle and it seems to be holding around between 33 to 35% throttle, sometimes a little bit higher, sometimes a little lower. Um, I forget what the cruise throttle was set to by default. If I'm not mistaken, it was like 1400. And based on what I had seen from some other videos, I lowered that to like 1350, which should be about 35% throttle. Which, in my opinion, is still a little bit high. As you can see, we're pulling around six, six and a half amps. Um, at least I thought we were. But the current sensor was actually reading a little bit high. After this flight, I uh, checked that versus you know what it used versus what my charger put in and I noticed it was a little bit high but that was kind of to be expected based on some other videos that I've watched but I did end up lowering my throttle a bit to my cruise throttle which you'll see in the next flight which it I only bumped it down to like I think uh, 1320 which didn't make a huge amount of difference but now we're uh, going to try out return to home just again just kind of trying out modes make sure nothing Nothing that uh, catches us off guard and surprises us. You can see it, it did climb, climb a little bit abruptly there. It uh, had I triggered return to home at I think like 160 or something like that. And it's set to return home at 300 feet. And it climbed a little bit abruptly there. It climbed up to like 320 and then it settled back to 300. But you can see it's doing a fairly good job of holding that 300. And uh, navigating well. It's on the way home. Everything looks good. Still enjoying this uh, the view from up here. Like I said, I know a lot of people don't like having the airplane in view, but I personally enjoy it. I like seeing the airplane that I'm flying. I'm, I'm flying planes for the sake of flying planes. I'm not trying to make cinematic videos, so I prefer to see the planes when I fly them. But it's just personal preference. But so we're going to go ahead and let it uh, return all the way home and loiter when it gets there just to see if everything behaves as expected so I do have it configured to return home at 300 and then once it starts its loiter it will descend to 200 and hold that 200 foot altitude indefinitely I don't have it set up to auto land or anything like that so you can see it's kind of uh, adjusting its course now to get a little bit north of home so that it can start its loiter and it's done that now, and you'll see it's starting to lose altitude as it begins that loiter. So it dipped down to about 190 or so, and then it will get back to 200 and start loitering home at 200 feet. So everything behaves really good, feels good, it seems to work well. Um, airplane's flying great. So now that that's done, we're going to fly back out this way a bit. And we're in cruise mode now, and you can kind of notice it's starting to porpoise the nose up and down a little bit. I did notice that throughout the flight. Any, any mode that tries to hold altitude tends to do this. So that's something we're going to address in the next flight. But for this flight, you can see uh, we've kind of cut ahead a bit and we're down here. We've got a nice sunset developing. And uh, I'm going to fly back home, fly up the bayou a little bit and uh, get ready to end this flight. Because like I said, I did do pretty much everything I wanted to do. I got enough data to check that current sensor. And we've had the auto trims enabled throughout this flight. So we're letting it trim the control surfaces and... Kind of just filling out all the flight modes and the airplane itself and uh, pretty much just getting the maiden out of the way and looking for any surprises or any issues that we need to address and getting a few things fine-tuned and getting enough data to fine-tune the rest. And everything's going really well. We've got a nice little sunset developed out here to look at on the way back towards home. And you might notice here that when we're flying in angle mode, we don't have that porpoising effect. 
Like I said, that's just in the altitude hole modes. And I do believe that stems, at least at this point, I believe that stemmed from the level being off a little bit. But you'll see coming up in the next flight. But we tried to address that. But before I landed, I decided to go ahead and pull the power back here and do a quick stall test just to see how it behaves. You can see it does dip a wing and quickly recover as soon as we get a little bit of airspeed over the wing. And we're back on our way. Control authority comes right back and really quickly, really, really predictable. And I did do that stall test in angle mode, which is probably not the best idea, at least for the first stall test. But it's nice to know that it easily recovers, even with the flight controller trying to level the airplane. It's not really going to fight you. It's able to recover and start flying and probably would have recovered on its own once it built a little airspeed up. The flight controller probably would have leveled everything out. But with that out of the way, I decided to go ahead and end this flight here. And like I said, we'll just kind of go over things and get ready for the next flight, which will be coming up here shortly. I'm actually going to edit all these together into one. Well, all of these. I'm going to edit both of the two flights together into one longer video. So hopefully it's not too long and boring and informative and enjoyable so um at this point like i said we're just kind of setting up my landing here getting lined up on the runway gonna make a nice little approach and that one quick little stall test also gives me a feel for the way the airplane feels make sure we don't get it too slow on landing or anything but i mean you kind of know the stall is coming on you have a little bit of fair warning so we're going to go ahead and bleed some airspeed off here and get it down Try to go for a nice smooth landing and that's perfectly acceptable, perfectly fine for me. And like I said, that's the end of this flight. So I'm going to go ahead and disarm here, which will give us some uh, stats. And now the next flight coming up is actually narrated live. I narrated that one while I was flying. It kind of talked about what I was doing. It kind of makes a little bit more sense, easier to follow along. So that's the end of this narration here. I'm actually going to switch over to the next flight and I'll explain what I'm doing there. So let's get on with that now. All right, so we're flying again. Uh, this is day two. This is the second flight on the uh, Swordfish. As you can see, we do have a fair bit of weather moving in. Um, kind of all around us, pretty much. But hopefully we have time to uh, get in the air and do what we want to do and get back on the ground before any of this weather kind of pops up here where we're flying. It's the plan, anyway. I'm kind of watching the system back that way, which is kind of creeping over this way. Kind of over the tail, you can see it right now. But I don't think it's going to get too close to us, but we'll find out. Anyway, we kind of uh, figured everything out on the maiden flight. I just want to do a couple of small little changes as far as like tuning the uh, auto level thing. And uh, just kind of see where we end up from there. So let me get on with that now. So what we're going to do, we're going to fly back this way, which is out towards where my antennas are pointing. And I want to fly in angle mode, so let me go back to that. I want to set my cruise throttle for about 30% or so, which is where I think it's going to end up kind of flying most of the time. I'm going to turn on auto, auto level, angle. which I've named auto angle as far as the voice alerts in my radio, just because there was none readily available for auto level. So I just, it calls out auto angle. Just wanted to uh, kind of point that out real quick. Explain that if you might have noticed it on the audio. But anyway, we're going to let it fly in angle mode right here with auto level enabled. Uh, pretty much hands off. And we're just going to kind of let the, uh, the airplane adjust what it thinks should be a level to maintain altitude. And I'm kind of watching my uh, numeric variometer which is my climb or descent in feet per second below my altitude on the uh, right edge of the screen there kind of in the middle kind of watching that and i want it to kind of settle down which it's a little bit gusty not terribly windy today it's actually a little bit lower wind speed than it was yesterday but it's a little bit rougher because of the uh, storms in the area which again you can see that one out in that direction is kind of firing up and moving in I think it's going to pass north of us, though. We should be okay. But yeah, we just want to let it kind of do its thing and settle down. And once we're happy with that, which I am at this point, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off auto level. 
so that it kind of locks in there. And now if I fly or switch back to cruise, if I fly in cruise mode, I want to see one, does it hold altitude well? And two, does it porpoise the nose up and down a little bit, which it already has started. And again, this is hands off. So yeah, I do think that's something that will need to be tuned out more so than just uh, doing the auto level. But otherwise, everything feels good, flies good. It's pretty much perfect. Got a nice little sunset developing back there behind us. And I really do like the view looking out over the tail like this. Um, I know some people don't like having the aircraft in view as much as possible. But it really doesn't bother me. I kind of prefer it, actually. I like to see the airplane I'm flying. And I really do like this this view looking out over the nose, seeing both of the props. It feels more like I'm actually in the aircraft flying than just seeing nothing but uh, the ground in front of me. I kind of prefer this view. It feels more like I'm flying some kind of twin-engine general aviation plane low wing, just the view that I get looking out over the wings and the props like that. To me, I, I, I kind of like it. So yeah, I guess we're just going to kind of come out here to two miles and uh, then head back and stay a little bit closer to home in case some of that rain does develop. I do have my radar, my, uh, radar app pulled up where I'm kind of watching it. I don't see anything coming, but these, these little showers are kind of kind of firing off. We just lost telemetry. Telemetry recovered. Telemetry lost. Yeah, I usually turn off the uh, telem telemetry alerts on my radio, but I haven't done that on this one yet. Um, I'm not really using telemetry for anything with this build other than the auto power on the crossfire. You can see it's actually telemetry recovered. pushing full 500 milliwatts. Well, it was there while it had no telemetry, but you can see now that it has telemetry, it knows what kind of signal it's getting. It has lowered the power. It's actually back to 500 now. But, um, pretty happy with it. Really happy with the way the, with the way the plane flies. And as far as that little nose up and down porpoising that I mentioned earlier that we tried to correct here with the tuning the auto level, it, um, it's still there. It's definitely there. I see it. You can clearly see it happening. Um, and if we go back to angle mode, you'll see, angle. get my cruise throttle set properly. You can see it kind of calms right down. So I don't think it's in the uh, PID FF controller or whatever they call it in 9F. I don't think it's there. It's not an issue with that, or at least it doesn't stem from that. I think it's more of a problem with uh, some of the navigation tuning. If I had to guess, I would say it's either too soft or too aggressive, one or the other, on altitude hold. And the fact that it's able to hold altitude as smooth as it does, just tuning the level, just flying here in angle mode. Um, I would say that it's probably too aggressive. I would maybe want to lower the gain for, I forget what they call it, maybe the Z velocity or something like that. There's a term for it and I never forget. Um, Mark Hoffman had actually helped me tune that out on the, uh, on the eSky Eagle. Back when I was running iNav on that one, it helped me kind of tune some of those parameters. I may look back at some of my notes and some of the tips he gave me on that and see if I can tune it out of this one. Um, but just cruising around here in angle mode, it feels really good. I see all the cows are hanging out back here in the back pasture today. Go we'll make a pass out by them. And as far as uh, running just pan and no tilt, I was somewhat concerned, kind of worried I might miss the tilt on this one. I generally do on my aircraft that I don't have a tilt control. But honestly, with this one, I don't think I would gain much with tilt. Because I can see plenty of the sky above me. And if I had tilt looking down, all I would see is more of the airplane. So I can pretty much see right to the wing root there and there. So there's really nothing to see by tilting down any more than I do now. Or than where the camera's fixed at anyway. So I'm pretty happy with this one having just pan. I'm really happy with the airplane overall to be honest. There's really not a lot to complain about.
it just flies so smooth and, and stable in angle mode. I imagine it would fly just as good with uh, in cruise mode with altitude hold if I were to take the time to tune that out, which I may do it. I'm eventually going to switch over to Arduplane on this one. It's kind of been my goal, was, was the plan anyway. I was actually not going to fly iNav on it, but I've been itching to try out some of the new things in iNav 6. And this one shipped with iNav and a couple of people in my uh, Discord. I know Mark just built one of these and made and did about the same. In fact, the same day I made mine, he made in his. And I know he was running iNav and asked for some tips as far as setup. So I went ahead and set this one up and I'm going to maiden it and kind of see what I would change and be able to offer some suggestions like that. And then uh, once I'm happy with that, I'll move on to Arduplane and set it up there. But honestly, so far with iNav 6, I really don't see anything anywhere that it falls short, honestly. You know, it's not perfect out of the box, but no plane is. And it's nothing we can't tune out quite easy and quickly. As far as the little issues I still see with the, the cruise. And again, if I go to cruise here, you can see it's not that bad. It's just a noticeable porpoising in the pitch axis. It's totally acceptable and manageable. It's just I know that it could be better, so... If I intended to stay on iNav, I would definitely take the time to tune that out. I'm pretty happy with the low airplane overall, though. Another thing I haven't mentioned yet, I'm running these uh, HGLRC Hammer antenna. They're left-hand circular polarized. And they connect right up to the walk snail transmitter. And obviously I'm running two of them. got one on each side. So we're running the V1 transmitter. And there's no reason they shouldn't work on the uh, V2 as well. But I've kind of seen a little bit better performance with these than I do with uh, either the stock antennas or the, uh, the Rush Cherries that I'm flying on the Eagle on the other V1 transmitter. I'm kind of happy with the uh, with the performance of these. I may actually pick up another set. They're fairly cheap. If I remember right, I think I got them for like under 15 bucks for two. I may pick up another set and swap out the cherries on the Eagle. And the reason I say that is when I, I head out this way, it's, it's pretty well locked in at 25 megabits per second out here. Where I know with the Eagle, it tends to drop down into like 12, 13 megabits. And usually in my turn down here at two miles, when I hit that two mile waypoint to make a turn, it typically will drop down to uh, in the single digits for my bit rate. But out here, it just seems to be locked in a little bit better. Let's see if we lose crossfire telemetry again out here too. You see, we're already bumped up to 500 milliwatts. Telemetry locked. And there we go, right on cue. You see we're still holding solid 25 megabits. And usually, like I said, I'm down into like 12 or 13. Well, there's 13 here. It just dropped to 13. Usually I'm down to 13 a little sooner than that. And we're already back up to 25. Telemetry recovered. So let's see if we dip down pretty low during this turn. No, we're bouncing around between 13 and 25. There's no single digits there. And on the way back home, we're still holding 25. So I'm pretty happy with these antennas, especially for the price. Um, so here I'm actually going to push the nose down and lose some altitude. And I'm going to fly back kind of a little bit lower altitude on the way home. And see how the bit rate holds out. So you can see we're still like 1.6 something miles out and we're down below 50 feet. We're running right along these little treetops out here. Don't want to get too low. Telemetry lost. And we're losing cross telemetry, telemetry. Recovered. telemetry lost. And I'm going to need to disable that on my radio. But yeah, you can see we're holding 25 megabits just fine out here. So like I, like I said, again, I'm pretty happy with these antennas. And uh, I'm glad I decided to try some of those out. I was going to get another set of the Rush Cherries. 
But these were available on Prime and I ordered them just so I'd get them quicker and try them out because they were cheap. Just to see how well they would work and they have surpassed Telemetry my expectations. Lost. And yeah, definitely do need to disable that alert in my radio. It's kind of annoying. Especially, I mean, it doesn't bother me, but it, it's kind of annoying while I'm trying to do these voiceovers in my videos. So we'll line up on this little lane down here between the cow pastures. Again, we've got a nice little sunset developing out there. Got some nice rays peeking through the clouds. Telemetry recovered. And even with that little slow porpoising in the pitch axis, it's still doing a fairly good job of managing its altitude. So there's nothing really to complain about. It's just, like I said, it's something that I can improve to get it flying. I mean, it's near perfect now, but I believe I could get it totally perfect. So I'm going to look back towards that storm system again and kind of looking over, checking the radar. And it is kind of still developing behind us, moving this way, but... We should have time to uh, finish out the battery, I think. And speaking of the battery, I did also recalibrate my current sensor after the last flight. And as I suspected, it was reading a bit high. And it wasn't terribly far off. Um, I'd used like 2015 or something like that milliamp hours. And the charger, including balance in the battery, only put back like 1850. So it wasn't terribly far off, but it was enough that I went ahead and recalibrated it. Just did a quick uh, calculation based on those numbers to change the current scale. And uh, seems like it would be pretty happy cruising at about 5 amps or so. This one is set up, I have my cruise throttle set currently at about uh, 1320 microseconds, I think, which is roughly like 30, well, it's exactly 32% uh, throttle. And you can see it is kind of holding a little bit higher than that with the average, I mean, with the uh, auto throttle. Um, I think I could maybe play with the trims a little bit. They am running auto trims. I think I could maybe trim it to fly with a little bit less power and uh, maybe play with that level setting and tune the altitude control loop and maybe get a little bit more efficient. But like I said, I'm probably not going to spend a terrible amount of time getting this all dialed in and just to start over in Ordu Plane when I do eventually move to that. Um, honestly, I would kind of like to have one iNav plane stay, or one one of my walk snail planes stay on iNav. That's another reason I wanted to do this one too. I wanted to try out walk snail with iNav. Everything I've flown with walk snail so far was Ordu Plane, but I wanted to run an iNav build on it just to, uh, get a feel for the OSD and everything. But I do miss my custom fonts. And that's no fault of iNav. That's uh, something that Walksnail needs to fix. Cadex Walksnail. They need to fix the custom font support for iNav so that you can use custom fonts in the receiver rather than just in the rendering with the OSD overlay tools later. But to use them live while you're actually flying, it's something that uh, Cadex slash Walksnail needs to address. But for now, this is the default iNav font that comes in the walk snail system, and it, it works fine. It's not that bad, but I do like the other ones better. And that's one of the main reasons I want to go back to Ordu Pilot. That, and I, I just like learning and progressing in Ordu Pilot and learning more about it. And, I mean, we can clearly see that it's going to be a good platform. You know, the, the airframe itself is is really good performing little plane and flies really well, so... I know it will do good with Ordu Plane. I mean, Ordu Plane will pretty much fly anything you throw at it, you know, to an extent. But, I mean, I imagine this would be one of my favorite planes, for sure. I mean, it kind of is already on the way there now. It's definitely one of my favorites as far as the way it flies and looks and feels and just the overall experience flying it. I really enjoy it. Um, so I would enjoy learning more about Ordu Plane while flying this one. It would be an overall more enjoyable experience, I think. You know, we kind of still see those rain clouds, rain rain showers up ahead there. And if I keep an eye on them on the radar, they're still north of us for now, but they are going to end up creeping down this way, maybe. Kind of the way it looks right now. And this metal shop coming up here, I'm not exactly sure how tall it is. We're reading about 
38, 39 feet of altitude, 36, 37. I think we should clear it, but if not, we can just quickly climb above it, make a low pass over it. You know, we'll do some low, low cruising down this way. We'll pass by the neighbors and pass up here and by the next neighbor. You can see how far apart my neighbors are up here. And then uh, we're quite a ways further down the road than that. So we'll say hi to these neighbors. And we'll continue on and we'll make a pass down the runway, I guess. And we're just kind of up here cruising, enjoying the plane at this point. My intent was to actually get enough footage here to make two videos between my maiden flight and then the flight today. But we may actually uh, have enough to make two videos. I'm not sure how I'm going to edit this stuff, but by the time you're watching it, obviously you'll know. I'll have figured it out and got it online by then. But overall, I'm, I'm really pleased with this little plane. Let's go back to uh, angle mode and get back on the power. We'll make a little pass down the runway. Do a nice little climb out here. One thing I do want to do, I want to set my throttle back to right about where it cruises. And I want to go back to manual mode and see how my trim changes. Manual. Absolutely no change in trim. And roll feels good. Pitch feels really good. Feels really locked in and stable. This almost feels like acro mode, although I'm in manual. This little plane flies so locked in like it's on rails. It feels like acro mode when you're actually flying manual mode um if i'm being totally honest i really don't remember an airplane in any of them in my fleet that i can recall that flew as well as this one does in manual mode you see i'm flying hands off right now this is 100 percent hands off now i'm going to give it a little bit of pitch up just to uh kind of get that i'm going to correct roll i want to just kind of get it settled down where it's kind of flying straight and level and we're going to go hands off right now. Still hands off, still hands off. In fact, I'll tell you when I do make another correction. I'm still flying totally hands off. You can see it's slowly kind of drifting off a little bit. Kind of starting to drop the nose. Now, if I don't touch the six, will it eventually correct itself with a little bit of speed? No, I'm going to go ahead and correct now. So yeah, it's not really self-writing or stable. It's just so locked in and stable and smooth anyway and responsive that it makes a really really good platform for pretty much any auto autopilot i think would fly this plane extremely well and i think that's why we see it flying so well with inav and once we do get to ardu plane i think it's going to fly extremely well with ardu plane as well so let me go back to angle, angle. Yeah, those dark clouds are still up there dumping rain. You can kind of see the rain falling, in fact. Still have a nice sunset out there to look at, though. And where are we on million powers? 2,000 right now. My battery is kind of starting to dip down pretty low, though. We're almost 3 volts per cell. And we're not. Well, we are a little bit high on the power. Let's get back to cruise throttle. Around 4.5, 5 amps or so. Yeah, the voltage does come back up a little bit. We're we're all right. And that's one thing I noticed. This this power system has a ton of power. It's way overpowered. But it's nice, controllable, and smooth power and efficient. So I don't really see the need to adjust anything, to change anything as far as props and motors or anything. I'm actually quite happy with the power system. Um, But it does seem a little bit power hungry for the... Uh, the 18650 1P, 4S 1P pack that I have in here. Um, kind of distracted by that sunset. It's looking even really nice now that the actual sun is right on the horizon, horizon below the clouds. But what I was saying about the power system, it's a little bit power hungry for the battery. But if I want it to run a 2P battery in here, a 4S 2P, it's a 
going to be a little bit difficult to keep the balance. I would probably need to uh, add some tail weight, I think, to run a battery that big in it. Although it would physically fit, it would be a little more difficult to balance with it. So I think what I may actually do is consider running like a 21700 or something like that. A larger 1P pack with a little bit higher current rating. And uh, just so that we can maybe eke out a little bit more without draining the battery too quickly or pulling too much amp draw from it anyway. Um, but I'm pretty happy with it overall. So I was hoping to get like an hour flight time with this one. And uh, I don't think I'll be able to do that with the 3500 lithium ion that's in it. Um, but it should be doable. The only issue would be running a heavier battery and then adding tail weight. I'm not sure how much efficiency you would lose adding that much weight in it. But it would probably be okay if I had to guess. But for now, it just it flies so good. I don't really want to screw with with the setup too much, apart from what it is right now. To be honest, I mean it's just so smooth and responsive and just dialed in. It's basically the best way I could describe it. Kind of cool seeing that rain falling out there, though. It's showing us a pretty good little thunderstorm there on the radar. That's I'm kind of surprised I'm not hearing thunder from it. But I haven't yet. We do have a nice little, uh, little sunset out here, though. So let me go back to cruise. Cruise. And we're going to do just that. We're going to cruise a little bit more. We're at 2340 something milliamp hours. I'm kind of watching that and my battery voltage just to see where we end up as far as uh, milliamp hours and the voltage because I do want to come down at about 3 volts per sale. I don't want to push it too much further than that, but I want to see if we can run it all the way up to 3000. Really cool looking sunset out there, too. But I want to see if we can cruise around at cruise throttle and get like 3,000 milliamp hours out of it without pulling the voltage down too low. And I also want to see how much flight time that is. We're, we're nearing 30 minutes right now. We're at like 20, well, let me see my timer up there, 27, 20 seconds. And, uh... We're still like 3.15 volts per sale. See my uh, OSD elements there are starting to kind of come and go. I noticed though the blinking elements and when the elements go away, they take a little while to come back. It seems to update a little bit slower than the Ardu Pilot OSD. Um, but it flickers less. When it does start to flicker like it's doing now, it, it's not as obvious. It's not as noticeable. But like right now, I want to see my voltage per sale. I'll have to wait a minute. There it comes up. And my milliamp hour counter, I have to wait for that to come back up. And there it is. See, as the elements kind of flicker and come back, um, it just takes a little, little longer for them to reappear. And I've noticed that as well when the plane is sitting on the ground waiting for a GPS lock, like before I take off. The OSD or the uh, GPS count will be flashing on the OSD. And it flashes really slowly. It kind of disappears for a while, then comes back for a while, then disappears. It's not really flashing, it just kind of comes and goes. Um, but hopefully Walksnow will get some of that Flickr and OSD stuff sorted out soon, and then they can uh, make a nicer looking OSD to work with it. And we'll have to kind of work around the OSD issues and be able to run the uh, 
custom fonts with iNav as well. But really like the uh, sneaky FPV font, especially the uh, the new one, Nexus, was the last one that came out, I think. It's been my favorite so far. And uh, when I get back to flying with uh, RG Plane, I'm going to be running that font again. So where are we sitting right now for cell voltage? We're at 12.4 overall. So we're still, we're like 3.1 something. Yeah, 3.11. So we should be fine on that. We'll make a turn out over the bayou here. Actually going to see if I can maybe gain a little bit of altitude. Make sure we clear the tallest trees. Make a little run up the bayou. So we probably need to get on the ground pretty soon here anyway with the weather developing and the, uh, the sun having set completely behind the horizon. Actually looks like another little rain cloud developed out that way too. And I see my neighbor's street light over there burning. I can see it in the camera. So yeah, it's getting pretty dark. Although it doesn't look like it in, in here. And this is still the standard V1 camera. The V1 walks now with the, uh, what is it, the micro, I think, or the mini. The larger of the two standard cameras is what I'm running right now on the V1 on here. And it looks fine. Even relatively low light like it is right now. And see the radio tower out towards town has switched over to its uh, slow breathing red lights instead of the clear flashing strobe white light. So yeah, you can see my wingtip lights are going to start showing up now as it's getting a little darker. That red, red tip out there looks kind of orange as far as here in the camera, but it's a red light. And we have a green one out there. Looks kind of white to me with a little slight green hue. And we still have some rain falling, and we're at 2750 something milliamp hours. We're at 12.1 volts overall on the battery. And if my timer would come back, I could tell you how long we've been flying. I don't have my timer or my cell voltage right now, but as soon as those re reappear, I do want to take a look at those. Okay, 3.0 volts per cell and 31 minutes. So that's probably going to be my cue to start setting my landing here pretty soon. And that's another thing. You see I don't have my AHI when I pan to the left or to the right. That's actually selecting an alternate OSD screen. And I'm using the pan channel to trigger that. And uh, by selecting a different sc screen like that, it will cause it to refresh the OSD. You can kind of see some of the elements blink in and out when I when I do that. So like right now I don't have my cell voltage or it just came up. But if I pan over here I can get it to uh, disappear and come back. So we're kind of dipping down below 12 volts overall for the battery. And it's starting to uh, drop out a little bit. And we're getting close to 3000 milliamp hours. Which is where I like to push these batteries to. See a nice little light out on the horizon there. I'm not sure what it is, unless that's the uh, the grain elevator over near town. It's probably what it is. There is a big bright light on the top of it. So we're going to go ahead and get down and set up a landing here and end the flight. And like I said, I really meant to just kind of get in the air quick, do a little bit of final fine tuning and see where we ended up. But ended up dragging it out longer than I expected. It's just so fun to fly it. Angle. So I'm going to cut the power and go to angle mode. Start gliding. And set up an approach for the runway. I'm going to push the nose down a little bit to lose some altitude and keep my speed up. Then we're going to start my flare and try to bleed off some speed here. Nice landing. And there you can see those wingtip lights lighting the ground in front of me. They're actually pretty bright. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that's going to be the end of the flight. There's a... 
everything. We're going to go ahead and get it disarmed. Disarmed. So that we'll drop back to standby mode. Cool the uh, video transmitter. Keep it cool anyway. And we'll go ahead and end the flight, end the video, and it's been fun. I think you'll see a lot more of this little plane on my uh, channel here. Pretty cool little plane. Pretty happy with it. So, any questions or comments, drop them below the video. I will see you all in the next one.